Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. Let's do this. Alright, today we are here to talk ingredients. We're here to talk about pentylene glycol. What is a glycol? You may have seen it listed in your skincare products in various forms of its family, such as... Now, a glycol has a carbon backbone and a hydroxyl on a 1 and 2 group. Okay, so what does this ingredient do? Why are we seeing it in skincare products? Well, first up, it's a humectant, meaning it draws moisture to the skin. Everyone loves a good humectant, so you see it in things like sheet masks. Now, it also can be used as a solvent. What's a solvent? Well, it makes certain types of ingredients play better with other types of ingredients. So you, so you would, might commonly see it in makeup. Now, it can also be a skin conditioner. Looking around, you can see that glycols appear in a numerous amount of industries and products, from pharmaceuticals to industrial. If we go to the EWG and we look up PG, oh yeah, we're abbreviating it, it gets rated a one. Some of the concerns are that there are data gaps, okay? So we look down and we can see that in the data sources for the EWG, we can go to the CIR, which is the Cosmetic Ingredients Review, and we can also cross-reference that with PubMed. Now with this ingredient, that's actually pretty key because the CIR information on just PG um, is limited. There's a lot of information about glycols, but not PG specifically. So we are gonna have to cross-reference it with this great study I found from 2017. So let's jump in. On the CIR, the study rates back to 2012. And there are three things that I found that stood out of substance from the CIR report. And one of them being skin penetration. This ingredient is actually really good at getting inside the skin, like really good. So that naturally leads us to point number two. Once it gets inside, what's it doing? And then number three, which was the re original reason why I wanted to make the video, was there's concern that it's a potential skin irritant. So really quickly, let me flesh out what I just mentioned, and then we'll jump into and cross-reference it to this study. So number one, skin penetration. One of the things about skin is that the skin doesn't really wanna let stuff in. So we try to find ways or ingredients that can help things get inside. And what area would you think that this is of potential interest and of money-making? Aha, the pharmaceutical industry. So, they took a medication in one study, they mixed it into a water-loving cream. They took that same medication and they mixed it into a water-loving cream with a glycol mixture. It was pentylene glycol and another one. So then, after 300 minutes, they found that in the viable epidermis and dermis, the water-loving cream with the medication was about 12% absorption the water-loving cream with the medication and the glycol mixture was 41%. That's some pretty good skin penetration. Like I said, that naturally leads me into wondering about absorption. What happens after it's gone through the epidermis and dermis and gets down to the blood supply and the fat? Well, they did a study on rabbits and that said that the chemical is metabolized slowly and then excreted through the urine. It's a lot more complicated than that and there's actually an area where with another glycol they go into a more complicated metabolic pathway. But with the rabbits, they found no evidence of um, tissue accumulation. Okay, that's giving me a little bit more reassurance because like we know with endocrine disruptors, there's quite a bit of retention in the tissues, um, which is one of the reasons that ingredient is, those in, that, cla that class of ingredients are very questionable to me. Before we address skin irritation, I wanna jump over to this other article that's from 2017. In this article, they address the idea that there are data gaps behind pentylene glycol. And one of the reasons there are data gaps is because in these glycol groups, 
they have varying lengths of carbon backbones. And so what they tended to do was group chemicals together that had similar uh, carbon backbones. Now this study said we don't want to do that. We don't want to assume this particular ingredient is safe. Um, we want to do a study on it just itself. So um, they did and it's super complicated um, and it's great and it's way longer than I can go into a video. So I want to jump to the conclusion. So it says, in conclusion, they conducted skin penetration studies using pig skin to measure the cutaneous distribution. The product that they were looking at was a sunscreen with 4% PG. Now, they talked about how often they were applying, how much they were applying, and they were measuring at different time periods how much was being absorbed. But they found when you were using the skincare product or the sunscreen at the appropriate percentages that it was okay, the amount that was being absorbed. So I don't know, it's interesting because in this article, for them to consider it was to be safe, you had to use a certain amount. And they even went into a worst case scenario of absorption, and that being that your body absorbs quite a bit of it. Um, so yeah, let's leave that there. Let's stick a pin in that and leave that there for right now, all right? Let's go to skin, let's go back to the CIR to talk about skin irritation, because one of the things that they found about irritation on PG specifically was they did a makeup foundation test. And they found a foundation that contained 0.112% PG. They got 101 participants. They did a semi-occlusive patch of 0.2 grams of the product. They applied it repeatedly for 24 hours of application to the upper back and they found that it did not have potential for inducing skin irritation or allergic contact sensitization. So for me, it doesn't seem like the worry might be that it's a skin irritant. There, it is kind of questionable that it's such a great skin penetrator, but let's move on to the formulator sample shop. They carry a version of pentylene glycol derived from sugarcane. And you can see right here, it's 100% bio-based and Cosmos approved. If we look down here at the suggested use levels, they're saying one to 10%. Hey, that's great, right? We have a Cosmos approved pentylene glycol for our makeup and skincare products. That's kind of interesting. So let's talk about all the brands out there that are using it. When I looked on the EWG for products that contained this ingredient, I saw that Beauty Counter puts it in a ton of their products. Beauty Counter claims to be pretty clean and they are even advocating in Congress for cosmetic regulations. They're using it in a lot of their products. Okay. What are these? A cure radically rejuvenating under eye hydrogels and seriously soothing biocellulose mask. Hey, they're both using a glycol in here. Probably because it's a humectant. Probably because it's a very effective skin penetrator helping get those actives in there. Aha, very interesting idea, right? If you're gonna use a product with actives and you're gonna pay big money for them, you might wanna have a glycol in there. All right, so there you have it. Some interesting information on this ingredient. It is excellent at being absorbed into the skin. However, from what I read, I don't see it being a potential skin irritant. So it would really be up to you how you feel about the safety of the ingredient. I don't think I would seek out a product with it specifically, like if it was being used in a sheet mask for a humectant. I don't think I would reach for that. Um, however, if my favorite foundation started including it, I don't think I would stop using it because of that. Does that make sense? A little bit of a gray area here for me. Um, simply because we know it's absorbed so well and we really always don't know what happens when an ingredient is absorbed so well. So, up to you and I will see you next week. Bye.